we are live. We are live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. This is such a beautiful moment for me to invite everybody to this intimate and wonderful conversation that we're opening to everybody with my special, special guest, Yael. So Yael, thank you actually for coming and using this time with me. Thank you. It's always fun to see you and it's even better to be with you and your community. So thank you for inviting me. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. And for those who don't know Yael, well, after today, you are going to search her and follow her. She is so wonderful. But I want to tell you a little bit about Yael. So she has an MBA, Yael Trash, Trash, Trash. Yeah. She is an MBA money coach and international speaker who helps Jewish women live a joyful, richer life. She's a creator of the financial transformation program, Jewish Money Makeover, in Spanish and English. She's the host of the award-winning podcast, Jewish Latin Princess, where she interviews the world's most uniquely talented Jewish women. I'm so blessed and honored that I was one of these beautiful people there. She's dubbed by her podcast guest and listener as the Jewish Oprah. That is beautiful. I love that. She's <laughs> insightful, honest, and a sensitive communicator. She authors the personal finance column, Jewish Money Matters, for Chabad.org. So that is such a wealth of platform. And I'm just so happy that you are here with me today. And she contributes regularly to numerous publications. She's a wife. She's a mother of four. She's native of Puerto Rico. Yael has globe trotted from New York to Argentina, to Chile, to China, to Israel and back. Welcome, Yael, to my show, to my podcast, to my Facebook Live. I am just thrilled and blessed to have you. It's always a blessing to be in your presence. So thank you again for having me here. I can't wait to dive in. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's tell a little bit the audience about who Yael is. Besides all of this, what we talked about, who Yael is. Tell us about yeah what you value, what you enjoy doing? I think Yael is a very curious person. I think that is, um, that's really what comes to me. I am a curious person who's naturally a connector, um, which I'm sure you know, Doris. Um, definitely a relationship maven, like I thrive on rich relationships and it's beautiful because it, what God has led me to build as a, my career really reflects that. Like my whole platform is built on making, building relationships and making connections, building relationships with my audience, with my audience, whether it be at a, in a speaking engagement, at an event that I'm teaching at, my podcast audience, my students, and my guests that I bring on the show. Like it's, it's, my kids are always like, Oh, she's now your best friend. She was on the show. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you, you're always talking to that lady who was on your show. Yeah, of course I am. Because we're now friends, right? So that, that's Yael. I really have a deep interest in people's lives, in, 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 in their, their, their emotions, their perspectives, their insights. And um, it's, um, it's a joy that I get to do what I do for a living and I get to interact with people. And what's interesting is that I'm actually an introvert, but that does go hand in hand because I really go deep into my relationships. And you also, you also are listening really well as a podcaster. I've seen it because being a guest on your show, you listen so attentively and so genuinely to other people. And I think that sets you apart from so many other people out there, you know, that you're sincere leaning in to every conversation that you're having is just beautiful. And I've listened to so many of your podcasts, which everybody, if you're there listening right now or later on on my podcast, make sure you check. Uh, our, all the notes will be in the, in the episode notes. So, so make sure you check up. Here's a question I have for you. What surprised you most as you begin your podcast career? Mm-hmm. As a podcaster, what surprised you? What, well, what surprised me the most is how easy it could be. And by this, I mean, 
I'll, I'll tell it to you like this. A lot of people started asking me right when I started getting, I started, you mean you got that big person as a guest? Like, how did you do that? And I didn't find, and what do you mean? How did I do that? I was just, I just sent an email and I was myself and I asked. So I think a big surprising thing, and I pro maybe it didn't surprise me as much as when P it was reflected to me, kind of like, oh, I could do this really easily if I'm just myself. If I genuinely express interest for somebody else's work, is if I can genuinely highlight what I see their contribution is, how they could be a light unto other people if they came on my show and how we I would love to shine a light on their work. Of course, people would say yes. And that's exactly what happened. And so I found it really, really easy to connect with people. Whereas I was, people might think that it's so hard. Like, why is this big famous person going to want to talk to me? And my answer to that is try, try, and you will see the magic happen. Be yourself, send that email, send them that DM on Instagram, right? Just support their work and then make the ask and be friendly. You don't have to be creepy about it. You just, just be yourself. You know what? I love that you talked about taking the step, you know, because a little courage of us yield so much more benefit, not only to us, but to our listeners, to everybody who's around us. And in, same thing happened with me. You know, people said, how did you know what to do when you left your work as the education director? And said, how did you know how to write this book? How did you know who's going to publish it? And so on. How did you? Lots of how did you? And the answer is, as you pointed out, you just, like the Nike commercial, just do just it. Do it. Just do it. That's the other thing the people we we tend to think that we have to know the how we don't have to worry about the how we just have to do the one thing that's in front of me mm -hmm. and god takes care of the how god takes care of how the podcast is going to work out and how the promotion just do the thing just ask connect offer value and don't leave the how to the master of the universe. Just Ooh. focus on what you can do. I love it. I love it. So here's another question. What, all of your career, what do you think inspired you the most? Or, or I know it's hard to, but you can pick a few, but mm. what inspired you? So we talked about what surprised you in this work. What inspires you in this work? Oh, it's very easy for me to answer that one. And I think you're going to know the answer. It's my Judaism that inspires everything I do from A to Z. It informs it in everything. It informs my personal life and it informs and inspires my professional life. There's nothing that I ever talk about or that I ever do that is not infused with Jewish wisdom because that's not because I am wise, but because I live and breathe this wisdom. I try to internalize it and I think as opposed to some that sometimes people want to compartmentalize some parts of their lives, maybe even their religious beliefs. I show up with all of it. Like Jewish Latin princess, you're going to know that Judaism is going to come out of my mouth somehow. But I think for people, it's not scary. It's, it's refreshing. It's it because it makes it really real and really natural. And I, um, I don't do it in a preachy way. I do it in an inspired way, you know, because I see it as a, much like you, I see it as a universal wisdom that anybody can relate to. So it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. It could be a Jew. It could be a non-Jew. It could be a very observant Jew. It could be a not very observant person. I think there's a message that I take a lot of pride in the, my ability to connect with a very diverse audience. And I think going back to what we said at the beginning, that's one of the things I love the most about my work, that it always ends up being full of that diversity in human, the human experience that I love. I'm, I, 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 just, I just love that. I can't imagine being just like in one box and with one type of people. That feels like, oh, not natural. <laughs> you know, I mean, my God. You could have said the words that I have in my head. You are saying the words that are in my head because that's how I carry myself in this world, doing the, the team building and the collaboration and the positive intelligence that I do. <clears throat> and it's, 
constantly coming back to the fact, oh, I'm a Jewish person doing this work. And it seemed, and at the beginning, may I admit, may I admit that there were times where I thought to myself, oh, if I go to corporation, or if I go to different places, is that, do I need to say it or should I, maybe I should put it again in a different box. And then I realized that it's not me putting it in a different box. Right. What they get is they get this package, the Doris, and part of Doris is, magic charm what she has to offer is the Judaism is the fact that she's Jewish because I carry it with pride mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not just what I am it's who I'm living yep you know, I'm and, living it and you know what that's what humans need humans want all of us we want connection if there's something that people are desperately seeking for is connection and so we need to show up the whole the whole the all of it the whole gamut of um what we are and what we stand for um so that's probably why you and i connect so well and it's, it's so funny because i just started teaching my 10-week um financial program for women yesterday and one of the things that i took out of it after i finished my first session obviously i was all lit up because i was back in a group setting teaching and um and all there were women from all over the world spanish-speaking jewish women and Doris, after I hung up the call, I just reflected on what just happened. And in that Zoom screen, there were women from hair coverings to tank tops to less, like there was just a gamut of like religious observance. There were converts, there were everything that you can imagine. And I said, this is who I attract because this is how I, this is what I want. <laughs> this is who I am. This is who I love. I love the diversity and everybody's welcome. You are, yes, that's why I love you so much because we are so on the same level with our understanding of the world and our place in that world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. So you start talking about the financial freedom in your courses. I want, in the programs that you're doing, I want everybody to know what is it your specialty? Because you are a woman master of many things, but then you you narrowed it and you found a niche that is unique for you. Share with us how you got to that niche and what it is that you're offering to the world. Yes, yes, I would love to. So right now I am, aside from being a podcast host, which obviously I love that side of my career and it ties beautifully into what I'm doing now. I'm also doing money coaching and teaching women, like you said before, how to live a joyful, richer life, how to really live a life with wealth and being great agents and custodians of that blessing of abundance, right? And so I teach online programs where I'm with there. I also have a membership. It's a lot of fun. But now to how did I get there? It's really very interesting because I went from really broad and establishing a presence, a pretty solid presence to really narrow. But what happened was I had been blogging and teaching for many years to diverse Jewish audiences. And I had even established my podcast. And over the years, I kept thinking, but what is the one problem that I'm solving? Yes, I provide a lot of inspiration. Yes, I give a lot of connection. But there are like four fundamental problems that I saw women are facing. It would be a problem in their relationship with their children, parenting. Okay, I could talk about parenting. I'm a pretty good mother. But I don't know if I want to talk about parenting the whole day. Marriage. That's interesting. Yeah, I have a lot to say about marriage. I don't know if I want to talk about marriage the whole day. Food. I don't really know much about the relationship with food. Um, like I don't really, I'm neutral about this. Have not much to say. Not Didn't really suffer in this area. Or money. And then it hit me. Oh, I have a lot to say about money. And by the way, Jewish wisdom is what I attribute to having changed my entire relationship with money. And I, as you say, as you said before, I have an MBA. I come from a financial background and I went back to all the struggles, the mistakes, the mishaps, the relation with every, all the big problems that I had with money. And I realized, oh, I had these and I had the education. I bet you everybody else has problems. And the more I started talking about money, it was like I hit a raw nerve. 
particularly because I was addressing it with like a lot of spiritual underpinnings from our faith, which I said, again, was like that thing that really helped me and my husband transform our financial lives. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. People really want more. And they would let me hear more. Can you tell me more about that? And that's when I said, I really have to lean into this. I really have to show up and really talk about this and try to help women. And so I will, I will admit it was hard to really come out like openly and vulnerable because you know, that fears the fear factor and what are people going to say? It's such a taboo topic. Right. Um, but then again, I know that if it's taboo, somebody has to be talking about it. Otherwise, how are we going to break the stigmas around it? How are we going to get women to be more educated? How are we going to get women to build their trust, to build a beautiful relationship, all of the things, and nobody's talking about it. And here I am, a woman with a platform, a woman with a voice, a woman with a presence who can actually speak intelligently about it. I'm not going to keep quiet. And so I took the leap and I put my first offer. I've been after I've been like interviewing people and writing and da 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 da. da. But it wasn't until I put up my first paid offer for a program that I sold out immediately. And I said, "Oh!" And then after I was running, when I was running that program, Doris, my students said, "Can we continue? Like, is there part two to this?" I'm like, "You got it. We're gonna continue." And so here we are, <laughs> we've been doing this all year long and it's been amazing. And you know what? You just shared one more time that if you don't take the steps, the results will not happen. You yep. had, you had the, the desire, you had the fire in your belly and you took the actionable steps to get you there. So mm -hmm. here's a question for you. What would you say to our listeners, to our viewers right now on Facebook, if you had two tips that you think that it should be in every person's arsenal mm -hmm. when they come to a money mindset uh, course or, or what should they do, you know, share with us if you can. Number one tip, number one thing that is in your toolbox, you just have to actually pull it and use it and cultivate, cultivate it is your trust in something greater than yourself, not your trust in your boss, in your credit card, in your husband, in your employer, because ultimately your money is coming from the creator of the world. And so when we rely on that, which is infinite, then we're really tapping into the infinite. And that translates into a real change in your financial accounts, if you know what I mean. So this is tool number one, and we all have it. We just need to actually use it consciously, develop it, trust. Okay. I am loving this because, you know, because, you know, I talk about relationships mm -hmm. and I talk about the six things that are the pillars of every healthy relationship. And when I go to different companies or when I do my classes online, I do a little poll um, and I put all the six mm -hmm. and I say, vote which one you think is the number one. It will not surprise you that the number one is trust. Mm. So it's trust not only in relationship with money, right? But it's in relationship generally. It yeah. is the number one. And then because... I have the Jewish hat always on me and because I'm Israeli and because I know Hebrew. So I go to the word trust and that's, you know, bitachon and livtoach. And then we talk about how bituach, the word insurance, shares the same root. And I talk about what gives you that sense of, of insurance? You know, how do you get assured? And it is beautiful conversation. And, and I love the fact that you put it to the power outside of us. For those of us who are listening right now, who may be Jewish, maybe not, uh, I always talk about, and tell me what you think, Yael, I always talk about that power, which is outside of our bodies, which is outside of ourselves. So you may not, some people may not feel comfortable to say God, you know, what it is for you individually. Just knowing that ourselves, all in all, is not enough. Mm -hmm. that's where I always go. You know, we are not enough. When we say to friends, oh, I'll see you tomorrow at five, who is reassuring you that tomorrow at five will actually come? 
and you actually do it. So, so religious people will say, Bezrat Hashem, God willing. Right? You know, I always say that in English to my friends. I said, God willing, tomorrow at five, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. At first, they were laughing at me. But now it's like, <laughs> did we envision this year? Did we know what this is going to be? So I love that number one tr tool is the concept of trust. Okay, share with us another tool. One mm -hmm. more. The other tool I think you're going to love too, because it ties in exactly with what you were saying just now is yes, indeed, we have to trust that there is something greater. And when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your health, when it comes to everything, but we see it very clearly with our money and we see it very clearly with our health. Okay. That is the only thing that can provide that, that, which is, you know, you can call it whatever you want. I will call it God. Right now. Number two is within you within every human being there is a piece of that there is a piece of the divine and so just as you have to trust in that which is greater than yourself you also have to trust that that force chose you to be here and that means that you have something to accomplish and it's not about you it's about the boss, so to speak. It's about the other. It's about how can I be of service? And how this ties to our financial life is because we very often take with us this silly little lie of who am I to do this? And who am I to charge? And there's no way I could negotiate. There's no way I could get that salary. There's no way I could do that project. And we come up with all these roadblocks that are really just excuses based on who am I to do this, right? How could I, how could my family aspire for these things? Whatever it might be, it's who am I to do this, right? And the answer is, who are you not to? If God put you in this world, right? That was number one, trust in the power above you, right? Within you, there's a capability that you're not aware of, but your creator is aware of, and you better show up for it because we get one life. This is it. And we better show up for it fully. Okay, friends. I hope you understand why I love Yael so much. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't get it, let me just verbalize it for you all. I love this woman because she's so smart and so intuitive and so right on the money should i say yeah and, and right this is why like, this is why when you take a money class with me it's completely different yes we will talk about your numbers but before we talk about your numbers we gotta help we gotta discuss other stuff we gotta get to the mind we gotta get to the soul and the you know, numbers part is the easy part people you are so right and you know when you are speaking i'm thinking of positive intelligence and the fact you know that all my training with as a positive intelligence coach. And one of the things that we talk about, the number one, what we call saboteurs, right? The one saboteur that is, as a matter of fact, it's a, we call it the universal saboteur. That means everybody has it regardless of gender, regardless of religion, regardless of age, regardless of culture. And that saboteur is the judge. We all judge ourselves. Who am I to do it? You know, I am such an idiot, I could never do this. You know, and then sometimes the judge becomes also on other people. Well, why would they do it? They can't do it. Or the judging of the circumstances. Because of this situation right now, I can't do A, B, C. And we forget that the one judge, we call it, you know, the El Elyon, God is the supreme judge. Mm -hmm. Let him be the judge. Mm -hmm. You just work on discernment. Don't worry about the judging piece. Yep. You know, that's, I, I just love that you say that. That's yep. beautiful. So Yael, Yael, all, I hope you all are having a, just a wonderful time. And here it is, I want to ask you, how can people connect with you to continue learning from you and share with us? I would love to have everybody connect with me. So there's a few ways. Number one, you can find me on iTunes and any podcast platform, Jewish Latin Princess. You're going to really love the show. If you love this conversation, this is how the show is. It's really, really fun. You can also find me on my private Facebook group called Jewish Money Matters. And this is where we dive in into all things money connected with Jewish spirituality and wisdom. And if you want, you could download a free gift that I have for anybody who wants to explore an idea that we didn't even get to cover, but I, I always like people to learn about it, which is what I call a money date. 
And I have a little gift that anybody can download where they can learn how to have very intentional money dates and really be intentional about how they're managing their money. So they can all find that at jewishlatinprincess.com forward slash money date. I love the concept of money date. Do you, how did you come up with the name? So I did not. I learned this as many financial therapists use the name, but I particularly learned it from Barry Tesler, who's been on my show. I have other friends who call it a money party, whatever you call it. It's pretty much the same idea. It really is an intentional space and time in your calendar where you're actually dedicating time to your money. But it's, as you'll soon find out, it's not just the numbers. There's values that you have to first take into account and goals. And it's a really beautiful experience where what we're trying to do is lift the fog and really be intentional with how we want to be agents of the money that God is bestowing on us. I love the, the truth and the transparency in this beautiful talk and how you inspire us to delve into the concept that many times women and, and people, but mainly women, shy away from yeah. and and to really take the cover off take the cover off and expose that in a in a way that is inviting that is not intimidating thank you so much Yael. it has been a pleasure to have you on my podcast you're always welcome to come again anytime you want thank you thank you my my pleasure thank you very much and all my friends on facebook and youtube i hope you enjoyed this and let's be in touch soon bye